Welcome back. Sperm counts among men worldwide are dropping at an accelerated rate according to a large new study published this month. The study is an update from 2017 research by the same scientists, although critics were quick to point out that the earlier study had only included North America, Europe, Australia and New Zealand. For more on this, we are joined by Dr. Hagai Levine, an epidemiologist and Hebrew University of Jerusalem and research team leader. Doctor, thank you so much for joining us this evening. Now, this study is an update from a 2011-2017 research study but it dates back as far as 1973. What was the biggest finding from your recent investigations? Good evening, uh, Katlego. We found a global decline, meaning not only in North America, Europe and Australia, but also in Africa, Asia and South America in sperm count between 1973 to 2018, a drop of more than 50%. So this is a dramatic decline in both the sperm concentration and total sperm count. And even more surprisingly, that when we looked at the data only after the year 2000, the, the rate of decline almost doubled. So the decline is accelerating. So what did you find to be the contributors to the falling sperm counts? So in this study, we didn't check the causes, although we controlled for a, a plethora of covariates, so we know that this is a real decline and not determined by attributes of the studies. In other studies, by us and by others, we did study the causes of poor sperm count and found two main issues. One is that exposure during fetal life, when the male is in his mother womb, in fetus, as fetus, then exposure to chemicals, man-made chemicals, such, such as plastic additives, are harmful to the proper development of the male reproductive system, and this could explain partially the decline. The other factor that in adult life, the male reprodu uh, manufacture the, the sperm all the time, and usually the same factors, based on specific studies, that harm health, also harm sperm, such as lack of physical activity, poor diet, rich in ultra-processed food, exposure to chemicals such as pesticides, and uh, um, smoking or using marijuana. Sure, Doc, this is very alarming. So does this then mean that the human species is at risk? Will we see a decline in the overall world population? So... The most concerns, concerning issue is that from other studies we know that poor sperm count is a predictor of early mortality and of morbidity, meaning that the, the global decline in sperm count actually is like a barometer to represent the, that men all over the world are not healthy. And you could also see it in other health issues. And it's clearly because of the environment and not because of genetics. So I don't know what will happen in the future, but I think we have to be concerned and we need to take measures. We need to find solutions to reverse this adverse trend. I don't know what will happen with fertility. I must say that nowadays in Israel and South Africa and the USA and in most countries around the world, many men have fertility problems. The, the, when a couple got fertility problems in more than 50%, it's because of the male factor, and this is often neglected. So this is not only a problem of the future, it's a problem of the present, and, and I'm very worried that we will continue to neglect this problem and not understand that if we don't change the way that we behave and our exposure to chemicals by better regulating these chemicals, we, we are doomed to see a continuation of this decline that who knows where we will get. I don't know if to extinction, that's unlikely. But you know that over the last 50 years in parallel, 50% of species on Earth became extinct because of human activity. It could eventually happen to us. Sure. Now, this study, as you mentioned, Doc, was conducted across 53 countries. I mean, initially it was in some of the other continents, but now it's involved um, Africa and South America. Are there specific regions where the risk is at its highest? 
Unfortunately, because of the nature of this study that is global, it's not designed to see what happens in specific country. And in order to, to understand what happens in a specific country, such as uh, South America or Nigeria or Kenya or, or Libya, etc., you need specific data from this country. Unfortunately, even in this study, there is still, still scarcity of data from Africa. And I think it's a problem. I think that we need to, to do much more research in Africa. We need also to have much better andrology laboratories, a capacity to test the semen also in Africa. Nowadays, there are even features that you can test through your cell phone or at home. And I think that like with the cellular revolution, maybe we need also to allow uh, people of, of in different countries in Africa to get access to test their semen uh, more easily, to be more accessible. And then they would know their reproductive capacity, which also represents the health and we will, will also be used for research. So that's what we need in order to better know. I must say that, you know, people used to think, well, this is a the rich countries' problems. But nowadays we live in a globally polluted uh, uh, all around the earth and actually some of the polluting uh, factories were moved from Europe or other continents to Africa and for some of the issues the problem is now worse in Africa. So I don't think that, that and in, in our School of Public Health we teach, uh, we have international master in public health program and we have many students from different African countries and I always learn from my students their, their homeland uh, uh, problems and many of them report and provide data about the severe pollution that is going on in Africa, in the soil, in the water, in the, in the air and this is a major health problem that we need to tackle. Mm. I mean, Doc, you made mention earlier on with regards to infertility problems that a lot of the time it's the women that we look towards in trying to solve those problems. How then do we get around the awareness and, and getting around the stigma of men being able to stand up and looking at those issues of infertility as opposed to it just being a female problem? It's a very important question. I think that, you know, by having this talk on, on air, that's part of the solution. We need to normalize uh, the, the simple fact that it takes two for a tango. You need to be fertile. You need both males and females. And there is nothing wrong with getting treatment for your fertility problem for men. Unfortunately, young men tend to neglect their health in general, tend to take risky behaviors in general. Uh, and that's something we really need to to change and get young men to think about the future, to think about the present, to avoid, you know, binge drinking and using all kinds of harmful drugs and less exposed to, to man-made chemicals that are harmful to them. And also, when they want to, to conceive, when the couple want to plan pregnancy, we need to test the man as well. And this is a cultural change. There is n n in none of the religion in, in, in Islam, or in Judaism, or in other religions, there is nothing that precludes a, a treating fertility problems among men. Actually, in many religions, it's good to be fertile, and they support treatment when needed. So it's more of a cultural and not religious issue, and I think that together, together with community leaders, not necessarily me, you know, coming as a scientist, but from community leaders that want uh, uh, their community to, to thrive and, and reproduce, we need to, to address this issue. And you asked earlier about, okay, but we have 8 million people around Earth, so what is the problem? Well, the problem is that we don't control it. At some point, we can start deteriorating and not controlling and already have forever chemicals everywhere. And people want to, you know, to reproduce, and many people are, are infertile because of this problem. As I said, it represents a health problem. So... We don't want people not to reproduce because, because they are sick. We may discuss what is the right number of people uh, on earth because it's true that the amount of people uh, contribute to the environmental pollution. But the way to do it is not by being sick. It's by providing better health care and better environment for everyone. 
prevention is certainly better than cure. Thank you so much for your time this evening. It's really appreciated. That's Dr. Hagai Levine and epidemiologist and as well as the Hebrew University of Jerusalem and research team leader. Thank you for joining us this evening.